Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church, where our mission is loving God, loving neighbors, and living with purpose. Whoever you are, wherever you are, however you're joining us today, we're so glad you're here. <clears throat> this is a communion Sunday, so if you're at home, go grab some bread and juice or a Pop-Tart or whatever you've got, and if you're here, we have homemade little communion buns and juice cups at the entrances. So if you didn't pick up one on your way in, maybe raise your hand and one of our ushers will come bring you one so that you're ready later when we celebrate the sacrament of communion. Today we are celebrating All Saints Day and there will not be art and faith after worship, um, but two weeks from day, today, and I cannot believe, I cannot believe I am saying this, it's hanging of the greens. And we're going to hang all of them this year. Every single green we got is going to be hung. We need your help. We'll feed you pizza if you will stay after worship and give us a hand. Finally, just a reminder that masks are strongly recommended but not required. However, please do leave them on when we are singing. And the choir will be keeping theirs on throughout the service as well. Choir, welcome back. We're so glad you're here. <clears throat> Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. rise in body or spirit for the call to worship. O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name. In seasons of rejoicing, we do not laugh alone. When the heavens open up, we behold your glory. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you tell us not to be afraid of what the future holds, not to worry about tomorrow, 
but you know how difficult we find it to heed your words. For we worry about so many things in our lives, our friends, and our circumstances. We come before you this day with these big and tiny worries. With confidence, we know we can lay them all at your feet. Amen. waits in mercy to forgive. Trusting in the promises given at our baptism, let us confess our sins. Gracious God, we come to you confessing our need. When we face birth or death, when we confront a time to plant or to uproot, help us put our faith in you. When we see a time to tear down or build up, when we face a time to weep or to laugh, when we meet a time to be silent or to speak, help us to rely on you. Gracious God, assure us once again that there is forgiveness in your love. Heal us with the knowledge that our sins may be left with you through our Savior, Jesus Christ. We continue in silent prayer.
for God is a God of compassion and love, ready to forgive all who truly repent, know that the God who calls us to be the members of God's family will welcome you with open arms of grace and forgiveness. Better? There we go. It's amazing when you turn this on and have that volume turned up, it just works a lot better. Well, good morning, and um, I want you to think for just a moment, do you know someone, anyone, who lived a life of faith, lived a life following Jesus, and died? I think most of us can, can say yes to that question. I'm going to show you a picture of two such people that I know. This is a picture of my mother and father, Glenn and Gail Yancey. And I thought I'd share just a couple of things about them. My father was not a real church-going kind of guy when he was raised and even as a young adult. But uh, much later in life, he, he received a call and he became a... United Methodist pastor. And he has like 30 of these Bibles. And they're all different translations. And um, when, uh, when they passed away, I guess I just kind of... My brothers all naturally thought I needed all 30 of them. So I've, I've got quite a collection of, uh, of Bibles. My mother, who was raised a Southern Baptist and became a Methodist after she met my father, she was a collector of nativity sets. She, she probably had 30 or 40 of these things, and every year around Christmas time, right around Thanksgiving, she would adorn every inch of her house with some sort of nativity. She just loved nativities and um, that's my parents now I miss them because I can't see them here with me but the Bible teaches us that they're not gone that they're still with us that they are with God and that they are part of what we call the um, what do we call them? <laughs> I'm going to call them the communion of saints. I think there's more than one, but that's what I'm going to call them. And um, the cloud of hosts, I believe, as well. How about angels? There you go. A lot of different things we can call them. And um, Hebrews 12 tells us this. So then with endurance, let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us. Since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, there's another word for them, let's throw off any extra baggage. Get rid of all the sin that trips us up and fix our eyes on Jesus, faith's pioneer and perfecter. He endured the cross, ignoring the shame for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of Him and sat down at the right side of God's throne. So, Today's All Saints Day, and we celebrate those people of faith who lived life in Christ and have gone on before us, and we remember how they lived their lives, and that encourages us in our faith journey, and we remember that they are with God and that they are actually with us, cheering us on in our faith journey. So we're not alone. We may not see them here with us physically and we may miss them just a little bit 
But in our heart, we know they are still with us and still encouraging us in our faith journey. Let's pray. God, thank you for loving and working through the lives of people of faith who have gone before us. We pray that you will help us to be like them, to live this life the way you want us to live until that day when we too come to you to be with you and all of the other saints who have gone before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you all in two weeks. I'm on vacation next week. Pray for illumination. O God, by your Spirit, plant your word within us that we may follow your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May we find our home in your kingdom and our life in your Spirit. Amen. The first reading is from Ecclesiastes 3 1 through 8, and can be found in the Pew Bibles and Old Testament section at page 616. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Our second scripture reading 
is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 22 through 31. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the perfect day to talk about time. Last night we set our clocks back, which gave us an extra hour of sleep, hallelujah, but also means it will get dark an hour earlier, boo, with the shortest day and longest night of the year coming up in just a few weeks on December 21st. As the first Sunday in November, today is also All Saints Sunday, when we remember all the saints who have gone before us, and remember in a special way those who have died during the previous year. So later in the service, we will read the names of every church member who's passed away since our last All Saints Day, and we'll hear a chime after their name in memory of them. This year has a different feel for me, because for the first time, in addition to helping to read the names, I'll be listening for the name of Rod Brown, my late husband who died one year ago tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, I know so many of you know what that feels like to anticipate the anniversary of the death of someone that you have loved very, very much. And I bet it did for you what it does for me, which is to make me more mindful than ever of how precious this time on earth is. And you add to that the strange reality of COVID still among us almost two years now, still shaping the ways we are able to gather and mourn and remember, not to mention the way it shapes daily life. And you put all that together with the famous words from Ecclesiastes, and we may well wonder, if there's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up, if there's a time to break down and a time to build up and a time to weep and a time to laugh, well, what is this a time for? This crazy time that we are in right now when the choir is back, but in masks. Y'all sound great, by the way. Wonderful. This crazy time when I got a text late last night and learned that Brewster Place Rehab is under lockdown again because of COVID, and family members were escorted out away from their loved ones. And people are scrambling today to get Christmas presents because we keep hearing about how many 
snags there are in the supply chain, and we're actually facing the prospect, again, of running out of toilet paper. What is this time for? Each of us will have our own answers to this question, but I believe the Holy Spirit is leading us towards at least four specific things at this time. And first, this is a time for being present. It is a time to give heartfelt thanks for all the ways we are blessed right now in this season, in this moment that is given to us, including those things that may not feel like much of a blessing. For example, face masks. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired of them. You have watched me week after week struggle with this routine of trying to take mine off and on while navigating. See, Pat, you don't have as much stuff as I do. Glasses, long hair, um, earrings, and the wireless microphone piece. You add a face mask to that. It's not a very graceful process. I don't like it. But I can choose to give thanks that there is something I can do in addition to getting vaccinated to reduce the risks of getting or spreading a disease that has killed over 750,000 Americans and infected more than 45 million of us. I can do something. Thank you, God, for these annoying face masks. It is a time to savor every moment we do have with our loved ones and hold them dear because one day we're here and the next we're not. I will never forget that on the day that Rod died, I stayed late after worship because it was a Sunday. I thought I had to get X, Y, and Z all done before I could take vacation with a clear conscience. Well, I can't remember anything about what X, Y, and Z were. Not a thing. But I do remember Rod calling me that afternoon wondering when I would get home. Where are you? When are you coming home? I'd like to think I'd make a different choice today if I had a loved one waiting at home for me. Not just November, but every month, every day, Every hour is the perfect time for giving thanks for this day that the Lord has made. To shift our attention from everything we don't have to what we do have, which is still an awful lot. In fact, I want you to try it right now. I want you to either close your eyes or look down at your lap just whatever will help you concentrate. And I just want you to mentally tick off inside your head five to ten things that you are really grateful for or that you can be grateful for today. I'm just going to give you a minute. Just list them. It can be family, weather, health, home, pets. All right, do you feel that? There is tremendous power in doing that. The second, this is a time for kindness. Earlier this week, I went online and purchased airline tickets for my brother's destination wedding this winter. And I bought tickets on American Airlines, which I did with a little bit of fear and trembling, given the story a couple weeks ago about a passenger attacking and breaking the nose of one of their flight attendants. And this is being described as one of the worst displays of bad behavior that the airline has ever witnessed. According to the FAA, there have been 4,941 unruly passenger reports this year. Just one little example that illustrates that for a variety of reasons, including stress, a sense of entitlement, 
fear, frustration, or simply not knowing how, people are not being kind. When we feel powerless, frustrated, or discouraged, we always have the choice of being kind. Kindness has a sparkle to it that can transform a room, a workplace, a classroom, anything. What better trademark, what better brand, what better uniform for us who claim to love God than kindness? At the very least, we can make sure that whatever is coming out of our mouths builds up and adds beauty, truth, and goodness to the world. Third, one thing it's not time for is worrying. I can't find anything in the Bible that says it's ever a time for that. Grief, sometimes, yes. Anger, expressed appropriately, sometimes. Concern, yes. Worried, no. In fact, Jesus specifically instructs us do not worry about anything. And asks, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? Have any of you ever succeeded in doing that? A famous quote says, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it never gets you anywhere. But even better is Philippians 4, 6. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And if you continue with verse 7, and the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It must be possible not to worry because Scripture keeps telling us not to. It's never a time to worry. It is instead, fourth thing, a time for seeking the kingdom. As a church, we've been seeking the kingdom by living out our mission of loving God, loving neighbors, and living with purpose, and living into our vision of being the church that feeds people both physically and spiritually. A year ago, we even made the commitment to being a Matthew 25 congregation and Tell me that after all the preaching and teaching we've done about this, you know what that means. All of you know what being a Matthew 25 congregation means, right? But if you're joining us for the first time or just had a rough night, it means we take to heart that Jesus taught whenever we feed the hungry, give a drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, care for the sick, and visit those in prison. Whenever we do those things, it is the same as doing it for Christ himself. And one of the ways we're striving to live according to these values and this vision is to feed the hungry people in our neighborhood. We even set a goal of providing 100,000 meals this year in order to challenge and stretch ourselves. And you've heard us talk many times now about our Wednesday food distribution, where we hand out 50 bags of groceries each week to neighbors who need them. That's one of the ways we have challenged and stretched ourselves in 2021. We've kept feeding people even after the funding ended from Operation Food Secure and Topeka Rescue Mission no longer provided us with food every other week. Many of you have given generous monetary gifts over and above your regular giving in order to help us keep going with this important, vital ministry. We have pressed forward even as the cost of food has continued to go up, as anybody who's been in a grocery store lately can tell you. We're going to be able to finish out the year, and after that, we'll see. A lot of that will depend on you and your gifts of time, talent, and treasure to the mission and ministries of this church in 2022. I believe with all my being, this is not a time to slam on the brakes or slow down or pull back. 
This is a time for our church to strive for the kingdom as never before, to put our foot on the gas and floor it, to keep looking outward and keep looking forward. I believe we not only need to keep funding our food distribution ministry, we need to expand it and look for more ways to feed neighbors and bring them together, whether through community meals, a food truck, or some other creative venture that maybe we haven't even thought of yet. I believe that one of the things that will make us more successful with evangelism is feeding people. I believe that if we really want to be a blessing, as we say we do, to the young families who use our daycare, why not start with feeding them? It's so stressful to raise children right now. It is hard work. Could we ease the stress just a little bit of meal preparation with a weekly or monthly taco night or something night? And of course, church is more, a lot more than just handing out food. It's worship and singing and praying and caring for one another. It is learning to glorify God and enjoy God forever together. And in all these things, it is a time for full speed ahead. For now, it is a time for being present and giving thanks. It is a time to be kind, a time to trust and not to worry, and a time to strive for the kingdom as never before. It is God's time, and we get to be part of it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. are filled with people who are lonely and in need of our welcome and care. Let us walk as Christ's sheep and give to God's world. We invite you to make a financial gift now by placing a check in the offering boxes at each entrance, by calling the church office, or by donating online at donate.fpctopeka.org.
Thus, these gifts guide our actions and strengthen our souls. This is our offering. This is our prayer. This is Your Word living in us and going forth from us to care for Your world. Amen.
we pray. Eternal God, You have woven Your people of all times and places into one communion in the mystical body of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank You for all the saints, all those who have been baptized in the Spirit and whom You have justified by grace and faith. We rejoice that their faithfulness has paved the way for our lives to follow. Thank You for the small and large saints who have given us love and care and challenge. Rod Brown. Dorothy Crawford. Doris Darrington. Annette Douglas. John Gooden. Jim Hoover. Ann Hula. Day Kaufman. Tyler Lockett. Jan Long. Janet Metz. Geneva Seward. Mike Stufflebean. God, in whose hands are life, death, and eternal life, grant us your Holy Spirit of encouragement and strength so we may persevere in our leg of the race of faith until such time as we join the great cloud of witnesses who cheer us on. Keep us one with all who proclaim Your Gospel until such time as we finish our race, collapsing into Your arms where You wait for us at the finish of Your new creation begun in Christ, the pace setter, and perfecter of the way, the truth, and life everlasting. Amen. Friends, this morning we gather around Christ's table in communion with generations of saints past, present, and to come. We come at God's invitation as people made holy in Christ, always praising God. We come inspired by the righteous, godly living of the saints. Through these saints, we come to know the deep and enduring joy prepared for those who love God. This is not a Presbyterian table. This table is the Lord's. Whoever you are, wherever you are. As you witness this feast, Jesus invites you to trust him and to share the feast that he has prepared. May the God of all saints be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts, all who seek God's face. We lift them to the Lord. Lift up your voices, O people, singing glad songs of praise to God joy in our hearts, with words of life on our lips, we sing praises to our God. Let us pray. God of glory, with a gentle breath of life, you enveloped chaos with your imagination, the earth spinning and whirling through space, the seas abounding with new life. All of creation is your gift. 
as we wait to come to this gracious feast, we remember Jesus, whom you sent to live among us. We remember the spirit in which he lived, served, died, and was raised. And we remember this mystery we call faith. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts of the table and upon us, your children, in this sacred space. With a cup filled with hope and bread broken in love, you make a feast for those seeking to receive your grace. Joining our voices together, we pray with the saints of all time, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture tells us that our Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took a cup and said, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also in remembrance of me. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup together, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us receive the bread of life. Let us drink the cup of salvation. God, from this table, you have fed us with your presence and have once again reminded us that every part of our life is pierced with your amazing grace. We give thanks for time spent here with loved ones and we thank you that this table is a reminder of the mutual love we share with you. Accompany us into the world with peace, peace in our hearts, and with strength in the days to come. Amen.
everything, there is a season and a time. Today it is a time to be present and give thanks, a time to be kind, a time to trust and not to worry, a time to strive for the kingdom as never before. It is God's time and we get to be part of it. This is the day that the Lord has made, and as we go out into the world, let us rejoice, 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 and be glad in it. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.